Mental Health, brought to you by Barber Behavioral Health, a service of Barber National Institute. And it is time now to welcome in our next guest here on the Blue Couch. It's today, Cecilia Hollins, Director of Clinical Programming for Barber Behavioral Health, is joining us now for our For Your Mental Health segment today, yeah. talking about um, gr dealing with grief and, uh, and loss. Yep. It's something that a lot of us have to deal mm -hmm. with at one point or another. Absolutely. All of us will have to at deal some with point, that at yeah. some point. And um, somehow we're already at the end of August. Uh, September is National Suicide Prevention Month. So um, we're going to start talking about some of these things that are a little more difficult to mm -hmm. talk about, mm -hmm. I think, for people. Um, but one of the first things, you know, when, when grief comes up is just to remember that somebody who's experiencing the, the death of a loved one is going to experience a, a wide range of emotions, which can be sadness, shock, denial, even relief. And, and the, these are all really normal mm -hmm. and expected under that grief umbrella. Mm -hmm. Um, and but also there's there's no timeline for mourning and grief and that it takes time for the weight of that loss to really fully sink in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always struggle with what what to say, how to help people through grief, yeah. especially if you've experienced loss yourself, you, you know where they are, but it feels like words are so shallow mm -hmm. in those situations. And that's such a great point. When I think of how to support somebody who's experiencing a major loss, two things sort of jump immediately to mind. And the first is to not offer false support. So mm. somebody who's experiencing a significant loss doesn't need to hear that everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. or that it was meant to be. They need you to, to listen and offer help, um, even if it's just kind of sitting with them through, through those tears. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the second thing that can be really helpful is just to help in really practical ways. So maybe that's cooking a meal, buying them some groceries, assisting with childcare, um, those are all really helpful right. too. And even just checking in, just, yeah. just oh, calling, absolutely. leaving a message, yeah. texting, just saying I'm here for you, yep. you know, let me know when, when you need me or how you need me. Sure, and, and if you yourself are experiencing a loss, you know, expressing that to people, expressing your feelings and just surrounding yourself with natural supports is so important, as well as making sure that you're sleeping and eating and, mm -hmm. and getting some occasional exercise. They're all really important things to think about. And I think about. when someone's dealing with grief, uh, you had mentioned no timetable, but mm -hmm. as time passes, someone who's dealing with it might think, you know, well, the world's moved on, but here right. I am still so right. sad. And that right. can be very isolating. Absolutely. and. And I would say that if somebody's experiencing a grief that's impairing their, their functioning to that point, that might be a sign that maybe it's time for some um, support groups mm -hmm. or for therapy to, to really work through those feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say also something, you know, for somebody who's experiencing that grief to maybe postpone any other major life changes around that time mm -hmm. because you do need to give yourself some time to just kind of sit with those feelings. You really but, do. Yep. Yeah. And sometimes you need somebody to tell you that because sometimes it's hard to see that uh, when absolutely. you're in the midst of it. Yeah. You're just mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, focused on getting through the day. Exactly. But, um, but certainly, you know, Erie does have excellent resources. There's the Highmark Caring Place, which mm -hmm. is a resource for children who have experienced loss. Um, and there are a number of support groups. Uh, many of which are listed on the National Alliance for Mental Illnesses website, which is NAMI, um, that are targeted towards all kinds of different types of loss. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, there are formal therapy and psychiatric supports yeah. in the area. And too. there's a great phone number to start yeah. with as well. Cecilia, thank you for stopping in today's oh, great conversation. Yeah, yeah, thank you.